We're going to be palpating the clavicle in this video. So I'm just going to do a brief outline. So this is the collarbone right here, which we're now going to be calling the clavicle. An easy place to start is right in the center. So it's kind of easy to find and palpate. It often sticks up. And this is right in this kind of the midpoint of it. So halfway between what often is called the convex aspect of it versus the concave when you're looking at it from an anterior view. So from there, I'm gonna grab on both the posterior and anterior side with a gentle pinch, and I'm gonna follow it all the way towards its medial end, which is here, and that's going to be meeting with the manubrium of the sternum here. So as you're walking up, you can palpate the front of the sternum or the breastbone, and you can just roll gently your fingertip onto the top. This is known as the jugular notch of the sternum or manubrium. And that's going to be the joint between the medial end of the clavicle and the sternum here. So I'm just going to pinch around and feel this joint line. So right along here, this joint is called the sternoclavicular joint. And to help prove that I am on the sternoclavicular joint, we can do a couple things. Um, but one of the easiest ones for me to do right now is to try to passively move the clavicle. So if you're not too comfortable with this, this might take a little bit of practice, but I'm going to gently use multiple fingertips and a thumb while feeling that joint line. And I'm going to pull the clavicle up and down a little bit. And that's creating a little bit of what we call passive movement at that joint. Another way to prove that this joint is to move the clavicle, and this is often involved with scapulothoracic motion or the whole shoulder complex. So as I elevate or passively depress, that clavicle is moving up and down. So I'm gonna go and put my fingertips back on that joint space, and with my other hand on her elbow right now, I'm just passively lifting up that shoulder, and I can feel the end of the clavicle moving back and forth. So that's a good way to help prove that you're on this sternoclavicular joint. So the end of this clavicle, again, the sternal end, and I'm going to be following that laterally all along this time. So now I'm going into the concavity aspect of it. And I'm going to just point out that as people head laterally, you often get kind of fooled for the end by how tight the musculature gets around this end of it. So it's a lot harder. This is upper trapezius coming in and attaching along the posterior aspect of this lateral clavicle, as well as we get below that, the deltoid muscle. So I'm going to try to push in behind as well as my fingers to the front and go as far as I can until I start to feel the lateral joint, which is going to be called the acromioclavicular joint, often known as your AC joint. Again, I'm going to use my fingertips sinking into that upper trapezius, squeezing the end of the clavicle until I find what I believe is the joint line. So I've identified the joint line right here. I'm going back and forth between clavicle to acromion, clavicle to acromion. And again, we can try moving that. So I'm going to passively grab onto this clavicle here, and I'm going to move that joint back and forth and feel for some motion. So right in behind kind of my finger right here is our AC joints moving. The previous way that we did it also works. So I can place one hand on the bottom of her elbow and I can start to elevate and depress through the humerus, which is gonna move the scapula and therefore the clavicle also moves with that. Again, one more time, just kind of wiggling that distal end. So the acromial end of the clavicle versus the acromion process of the scapula, making that acromioclavicular joint. Okay, so those are the two ends of the clavicle. And now we're going to point out a couple of the substructures to it. These are a little bit more trickier. Um, you're not going to get an easy palpation of them. But what we're going to do is on the medial end of the clavicle, I'm going to go right to that end and drop underneath it. This is where the costal cartilage of rib one is. So this is not going to be an easy palpation. However, there is a ligament going between the clavicle and this costal cartilage. I'm going to do a very kind of try to be gentle with this, but as you strum back and forth, you might start to feel a little bit of a twanging of the costoclavicular ligament, which is on the inferior side. Not going to be easy palp since it's also through pectoralis major. 
And I'm going to go towards the midline now, so right in the separation between convex and concave in the midline. And I'm going to try to hook my finger to the underside, like so. So again, rolling the pad and sinking in, and again going left and right. And this is going to be the insertion for subclavius. So subclavius is also attaching to that costal cartilage of rib one, traveling lateral and inserting right on the inferior midline of the clavicle. Okay, as we work our way lateral, this is not gonna be an easy palp. There's a really good chance you cannot feel the bony landmark, but if you're following along with a picture, you might be able to see on the inferior side something called the conoid tubercle and the trapezoid line. I will not be able to actually feel those structures on the clavicle because they're on the underside of this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm landmarking her coracoid process, which is right in here. And these two ligaments go between the clavicle and the coracoid process. So I'm going to start by finding the superior aspect of that coracoid and kind of hook in and then do it's fairly deep pressure, but a medial lateral strum. So the more medial one is going to be conoid. And then if you're able to sink underneath, this would be where your trapezoid ligament are. So you're not really feeling those bony structures, but you are getting kind of in the objective area of where the ligament attaches to. So that's going to be our palpation from end to end of the clavicle. We're going to be palpating the clavicle in a seated position here, and I'm just going to be outlining in case you're having your client seated in front of you instead of supine. So we're going to be kind of going from end to end and finding both of the joints as well and doing a quick little kind of palp assessment to see how the joints are feeling. So top of the sternum is the maneuverium going up and just lightly putting pressure onto the jugular notch here. And on either side right here is our joint between the clavicle and the sternum, the sternoclavicular joint. So I can quite easily kind of sink in and feel, you can see where my fingers are leaving a little indentation. Now, if you can please just gently raise your shoulder up on that side for me, good. And then drop it back down. So I'm able to kind of feel this whole joint and place my hand on her back and have her do that again. So I'm just feeling how the clavicle is moving on the sternum as they're going up and down. Good, so the medial end of the clavicle, known as the sternal end of the clavicle, and that sternoclavicular joint. Now we're just gonna palpate lateral all the way out to the other end here. Now, with our kind of body here, it's quite easily to identify where the end of her clavicle is, but I'm gonna make sure we can all kind of palpate that as I sink in behind, I'm squishing into upper trapezius with my kind of index finger here, and I'm following along with my thumb towards the front. And we get towards that end. Right here is that joint line. We're right in this location here. I'm going to place my thumb on the front of her acromion and my other index finger on the back of the acromion. And I'm going to do kind of like a little wiggle test. I'm just going to see how the movement of the acromioclavicular joint is moving there. See if it's excessive or not. It looks okay. And now I'm going to ask her gently to again raise her shoulder on the side so she's doing a little bit of abduction of the plantar humeral joint and see how that moves and then elevate by lifting it straight up and down. Good. And I want to also feel what's happening in that joint. A couple other motions that we can go through is to bring the shoulder forward in what's known as protraction and again see how the shoulder joint moves there, AC, and then into retraction as well. So sometimes in retraction, it feels like the clavicle is being held by the sternum and the scapula can move a little bit further. So sometimes this can be uncomfortable for somebody who's had some damage to their acromioclavicular joint. So it's kind of just assessing both ends of the clavicle and where we'd be palpating, plus how the joints are moving while the person's in a standing or seated position.